Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Nito King, and welcome back to Flight of the Amazon Queen. Last time we were exploring the jungle, we met that disappearing gorilla for the final time. And then were kidnapped by a bunch of Amazon women, tossed in a jail cell, had a useless hand puppet forced into our inventory, and finally were simply released with instructions to go rescue Princess Azura from Flota, which is what we were trying to do before they kidnapped us. Well, hopefully these two guys will be a bit more useful. I mean, Skip is reading the very comic book we want. Hi, my name's Joe King, pilot for hire. Hello, Joe. I'm Skip, jungle explorer and comic collector. Those shorts you have on are really swell. Where did you buy them? I don't know. My mommy buys all my clothes for me. It's just sort of Mike Laris Jr. What sort of things have you discovered? Well, my partner Bud and I have discovered the ancient wooden chicken of Talmaxacorda, the mystical toothpick of the great King Manaputu, and the sacred crown of the Sun King. I thought the sacred crown of the Sun King was unearthed last century. Yeah, but the Museum of Mexico lost it in their collection. We helped them find it again, which was no easy task. It took more than three days to look through 50 cardboard boxes. What comic book were you reading? Commander Rocket vs. The Mob. It's really good. I've got every issue of the comic. I even have number one sealed in plastic and buried in my backyard. Do you actually collect comic books? Sure, but I also collect the other magazines, like Amazing Stories, Detective Murder Monthly, and National Geographic. You read National Geographic? Heck no! I just look at the pictures. What's the one you're reading all about? It's really exciting! Commander Rocket is battling the Chicago mob, but his rocket pack runs out of gas. He has to find some alternative fuel source. How can he battle the mob? Is he a cop? Not quite. He's a vigilante with a rocket pack. But the cops always help him out. Do the mobsters kill him? No way! Commander Rocket always gets out of a tight scrape. He's my hero. Does he find any new fuel? Of course he does. He always wins out in the end. But you'll have to read the comic to find out how. Thanks for the plot synopsis. That's OK. My friend loves reading Commander Rocket. Another Rocket fan right here in the jungle. What a small world. Here's a message for him in Commander Rocket code. G-S-R-H-R-H-Z-H-V-X-I-V-G N V H H Z T V. This is a secret message. My friend has every issue of Rocket but one. Really? Which one is he missing? I know which one it is, but let's have some fun. The one where his sidekick quits crime fighting? Commander Rocket's sidekick got blown up in issue two. You must be thinking of some other comic. I gotta go now. Goodbye! Hello, Skip. Oh, hello, Joe. My friend has every issue of Rocket but one. Really? Which one is he missing? The one where he battles the Chicago mob. That's the very comic that I've got here. I've got a spare copy at home. If you want, you can have this one. Thanks. This'll make Sparky's day. I'm sure it will. I understand how important this'll be to your friend. I gotta go now. Goodbye. Amazing, someone was actually helpful. So let's take a look at this comic that he's so fond of. Okay, doll. Tell us where your pops hid in the Model X7 atomic brain o tubes, and we'll let you go. Never! Leaping lizards. Professor Harbuckle was right. Those thugs have kidnapped his daughter Stacy. Smash! Oh no! It's Commander Rocket. Get him, boys! Zap! Zap! Oof! 
What did you do to them? I immobilized them momentarily with my atomic stun gun. We have no time to lose. Jumping jackrabbits. My rocket pack is out of gas. Bleep, bleep. Looks like I picked the wrong day to quit the bottle. Bada, 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 bada. That's very potent alcohol you have there. It just might work in my rocket pack. Hey, go easy with that stuff. It costs money. Eat lead, rocket. He got away. Oh, rocket, you're such a dream. The American dream, ma'am. Well, what do you know? A loose page fell out of the comic book. It's from the Commander Rocket comic and has a coupon clipped from it. There's some sort of blueprint on the back of it. I could assemble it with the coupon that I have and see the blueprint, but for now, let's see what Bud is up to. Hi, I'm Joe King, pilot for hire. Hello, Joe. I'm Bud, and my friend here is Skip. We're explorers. Boy, it's hot here. Is it always this hot? You bet it is. It's so hot that you can chafe and end up with a rash. Just like I have. I tell you, a rash cure in this jungle would be worth money. Gee, if I find one, I'll let you know. Thanks. Well, I went to pick a joke response, and I accidentally picked the most important one. So he wants a rash cure, but... It's gonna be a while before we come across one of those. So instead, let's head back to the plane and give Sparky his new comic. Of course, on the way, there's one more screen. It's hanging out over the ravine. Well, I don't think we can do anything much with that sloth now. Good thing we learned a whole lot about them in the last video, though. Where is that comic? There we go. Well, Sparky, I've been all over the jungle, and I finally found you a copy of Commander Rocket. Here. Thanks, Joe. Now, as a reward, you can give me one of your files. Uh, Joe? Yes? Someone's clipped a coupon from the back page. Yeah, so? Well, it's not exactly mint condition, is it? Sparky, it's just a comic book for crying out loud. But I'm a comic book collector. It has to be in mint condition. Otherwise, it's worthless. I don't believe this. No offense, Joe, but I might get a new copy when we get back home. You can keep this one. I don't want the stupid comic. I want a file. Oh, you can have that, too. Finally. Next time, you can get your own comics. It's one of Sparky's tools. And while I'm here, might as well go get a banana for old time's sake. But you don't have to watch that. Let's just go hand this file over to Mary Lou. I don't have any reason to give it to her. Uh, yeah you do. Hello again. Hello, Joe. I'll let you get back to filing your nails. Thanks. He knows she's filing her nails. Give her the file. I don't have any reason to give it to her. Uh, fine. I missed a bit of Hello dialogue. Hello again. Hello, Joe. Who did you set the mission up for? Those monkeys. Are <laughs> very funny. We were trying to teach the native pygmies, but they ran away. Why did the pygmies run away? I don't know. I began singing when they suddenly upped and left. Listen. All things great and beautiful. <coughs> 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 Excuse me. Well, that wasn't too bad, was it? <coughs> that was fine. I'm sure they'll come back for more. Why, thank you. Well, I hope they come back soon. 
There's the important question. How did you talk to the pygmies? I just used my English to pygmy dictionary. Can I have a look at the dictionary? You know, I'd love to let you have a look, but it's the only one I have, and I can't risk losing it. Where can I get a dictionary? The only place that sells them is the New Age Native Pygmy Healing Crystal Earth Awareness Bookshop. But that's back in Venezuela. I'll swap you for your dictionary. Hmm, what have you got to swap? I got a really neat baseball bat. I've already got a baseball bat, in fact. It's been autographed by Lou Gehrig. Lou Ironhorse Gehrig? Man, he's my hero. I'd love to buy it off you. Don't be ridiculous. I'd never part with my lucky bat. Besides, it's in storage back in the States. Ah, oh, shoot. Mind your language, please. Thanks for your time. That's okay. I enjoyed talking to you. Darn, this stupid nail file is almost blunt. All right, now we have a reason to give her the file. Excuse me, Mary Lou. I thought maybe you'd like to swap your pygmy to English dictionary for a new nail file. Well, my current file is just about worn out. I could do with a new one. Hmm, let me think about it. Okay, just let me know when you've made up your mind. Okay. I'll swap. Good. I'm so glad that we could come to some agreement. So am I. It's an English to Pygmy translation dictionary. And yep, that will empower us to talk to the Pygmies. So let's go ahead and do that. That doesn't seem to work. All we need to do is talk to them while holding the dictionary. Hello again, Mr. Chatterbox. Of course, this guy won't talk to us anyway. I gotta go. There are only two pygmies you can actually talk to with the dictionary. Hello, I'm Joe King, pilot for hire. Greetings, Joe King. I am the chief of this pygmy village. How may I be of service? What's the name of your tribe, Chief? Where the heck are we? How the heck should I know? I just crashed here. That statue behind you, is it an original? You bet it is. It was carved by one of my great, great, great ancestors. Do you like it? Yeah, it's very unique. What's it meant to be? It represents the gods that have visited us throughout time. They came from the heavens in fiery canoes bearing gifts for my people. What sort of gifts did the gods bring you? All sorts of things. Like Velcro, Liquid soap, keyrings that beep when you clap, and banana flavored jelly in a tube. Mmm, that was yummy. Do these gods look like that statue there? No, not at all. Apparently, they're much, much uglier. Have you ever met any of these gods? Not personally. They aren't due to visit again for another two years. Thanks for the tribal history lesson. I feel smarter already. My pleasure. I've read about you guys in National Enquirer. It was an honest mistake. We were young. We were naive. We were in love. We were giddy with joy. We were drunk. Besides, she never said she was the governor's wife. Did I say National Enquirer? I meant National Geographic. Oh, yeah, right. Of course. <laughs> Look, just forget what I said, okay? <laughs> nice talking to you, Chief. Always a pleasure, Joe.
All right, well that failed to be useful in any way. Hopefully the witch doctor will have something important to say or I wasted a lot of time. Hello, I'm Joe King. You must be the witch doctor. That's correct. What do you want? What are you doing? I'm mixing up some potions for the villagers. Can I help you make some potions? Sorry, kid. This is a highly complicated magic I'm doing here. You just sit back and watch. Do you use natural ingredients? Of course I do. There's nothing artificial in my potions. I use leaves, flowers, tree roots, anything that Mother Nature will supply. Could you make me a rash cure? It's for a friend of mine. A friend, huh? <laughs> well, I need the following ingredients. The hair of a slow-moving climber, milk from a sacred site, and something else to give it a little buzz. Is that all? That's it. Bring them to me, and I'll have you fixed up in no time. But it's for my friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> Thanks for the information. I'm happy to be of assistance. Do you cast spells on people and ruin their lives? Hey, I'm a doctor, not a lawyer. I've got a joke. What's the difference between a lab rat and a lawyer? I don't know. Scientists grow attached to lab rats. <laughs> I must remember that one for the next witch doctor's convention. You must be a very busy person. Uh-huh. You can say that again. You must be a very busy person. Will you stop saying that? Sorry. You seem to really love your work. You bet I do. Being able to, to reach out and touch so many lives. Feeding off people's fear and ignorance. That's what being a witch doctor is all about. Don't you get holidays? I have a temp come in once a month. Apart from that, I get the usual public holidays, like Great God Mobubu's birthday and Happy Sloth Day. Well, I better be going now. Nice talking to you. Now, out of those three ingredients that she listed, we've already got two of them. Might as well hand them over. I have one of the ingredients you need. Ah, some wasps. This ought to give the lotion a little buzz. You have done well. All I need are two more ingredients and you will have a rash cure. Then there was milk from a sacred site. And we got this coconut from the mission, so it should count. Here's another one of the ingredients that you need. Excellent! All I need is the final ingredient, and you will have a rash cure. And obviously the last one is sloth hair, but I can't get that just yet. We accept MasterCard and Visa. I don't have those. One more thing that we need from Trader Bob, and it has to do with the last line of inquiry I didn't pursue when I was here before. Howdy, Bob. Hello again, Joe. I've got some questions that I'd like to ask. What do you want to know? What sort of things do you sell? I sell all sorts of things. Some of them are only for special customers. What are you interested in? Is that fish on your shelf for sale? Not anymore. 
we've had quite a few unhappy customers return it. Being a piranha, he tends to eat all the other fish in the tank. I think I'll browse. Let me know if you find something you like. Yeah, quit Howdy, kicking Bob. me out of the Hello, conversation. Again, I've got some questions that I'd like to ask. What do you want to know? What sort of things do you sell? I sell all sorts of things. Some of them are only for special customers. What are you interested in? How do I get to be a special customer? I generally reward my long-term or really helpful customers with special status. If you want to be special, do something to impress me. I think I'll browse. Let me know if you find something you like. Now, it's well known that when people put special in quotation marks, there's only one thing they can be referring to. Howdy, Bob. Hello again, Joe. I've got some questions that I'd like to ask. What do you want to know? Could you tell me more about Naomi? She's sweet, smart, and she's my girl. We're going out tonight, and I was hoping to give her some flowers, but I haven't had the chance to go out and get some. I think we can do something about that. Thanks for answering my questions. Hey, no problem. I think I'll browse. Let me know if you find something you like. They're both nervous about their date. I found this orchid in the jungle. I thought you might like to give it to Naomi. Gee, thanks. Orchids are her favorite flower. You're a real lifesaver. We've got a date tonight and I hadn't found her a present yet. Now all I've got to do is find a good restaurant. Sorry, but I can't help you with that one. Naomi will really love this. Glad to help. I'm afraid I can't pay you for it. Oh. But I can offer you one of these fishing nets here. Ah, that will do nicely, I guess. I'd better hide it so she doesn't see it before our date tonight. <laughs> well, I hope you get lucky in finding a restaurant, that is. <laughs> I'm sure we'll manage. I don't want to know where he hid that orchid. Are you sure it's okay for me to take one of these nets? Sure thing, son. You're a special customer now. Gee, thanks, Bob. My pleasure. And because I know you've been waiting for this one. Hi there. Rock! <whistles> Pieces of me! Pieces of me! Ah! Yo ho ho in a bottle of rum. <whistles> ah! Ah! Fifteen men on a dead man's chest! Who's a pretty boy then? Fuck! Not you, that's for sure. Did he say what I think he just said? Polly want a cracker? Fuck! The name's Wedgwood. Fuck! Bozo! I'd like to talk, but I gotta fly. Fuck! Wise guy, eh? Well, anyway, you can probably chart out exactly where we go from here, all the way up to infiltrating Flota's secret base. So I think that'll be a good thing to do to montage as we start the next exciting video. And then, Flota. See you guys then.